So the question today is, can dancing be worship? Um, and I think it's obvious that dancing can be worship, but it's not obvious to everybody. And in some places, in some churches, they don't allow you to dance. They say that it's wrong to dance. Um, that it has to do with it causing, you know, uh, sensual desires in people or whatever. <laughs> I think that's that's uh that's funny because the scripture we're gonna look at this exact concern was in the mind of this woman who disdained the dancing of David when he was worshiping. So it's Second Samuel six fourteen. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. And after he finished the burnt offerings and the sacrifices and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. In verse 20 it says, When David returned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of slave girls and of his, of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. And David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. And Michael, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. And so it's interesting to me that the the scripture that speaks of dancing before the Lord with all your might in an ephod half dressed and doing it with a heart that is just I don't care what anybody thinks I'm going to worship with a heart of purity um, that this was something that David who wrote the Psalms and messianic prophecies in the Psalms and wrote songs to God, this anointed king, who God describes as a man after his own heart, that this was the way that he danced before God. And it was his wife who despised him because she felt like it was a vulgar thing to do. And there are people today that say the same thing. But we can see that this is a religious kind of way of thinking that actually God doesn't honor. If we have this attitude towards the freedom that people have in God, it makes us barren spiritually. And, and we've seen this. You, you can see this when you walk into a church. You can see that there's no life in it. And, um, and this happens in places where there's a really strong sense of religiosity that despises other people's freedoms. And it makes them barren. But when you go in freedom, you seem to be really fruitful. The short answer is to can dancing be worship is yes. And I think this is something we neglect too because this is something that is so ingrained in us as people to dance before the Lord, to celebrate Him, to have fun, to have parties before God that the enemy of our soul wants to take it and use it in ways that don't honor God. So if you want to dance, you have to go somewhere that doesn't honor God to do it because they're the ones that have the lights and the music playing and all of this. If you want to have a party, many times you have to go somewhere that won't honor God so that you can have, so that you can party. But we who are the people of God, this is David before Jesus the Messiah came and sent us the Holy Spirit. This is David dancing in the Old Covenant. How much more should we believers worship and party and dance before the Lord? It should be something 
And he says, right here, many people don't dance because it's embarrassing to them. But David says, I will be even more undignified than this. I will be humiliated in my own eyes. He's like, I don't care if I look like a fool. I'm not doing this to please anybody else. I'm dancing because I am celebrating God's presence. And this is what's cool about David. He just, this is why he was able to slay the giant when every single other person in that army wouldn't do it. He didn't care what anyone thought. He didn't care if he lived or died. He believed in the Lord and he wanted to honor God in everything he did. When no one's watching and he's out with sheep by himself, rescuing sheep from the mouth of a lion, or in front of an entire army of scared soldiers, and in front of a king who wouldn't even go out and fight. He didn't care what anybody thought of him. He wanted to honor the Lord. And he's the same David here, dancing before the Lord in this way, saying, I will be humiliated in my own eyes. He doesn't even care if he thinks he looks stupid. He's going to keep dancing because he thinks God deserves our whole worship. And he says it over and over again, worship the Lord with all your being, with all your might, with everything in me, praise him. Do you think that means standing like this? <laughs> it can't, because he says with all my being, that includes his body. He's worshiping God with his body. What does that look like? Well, right here, it looks like he's dancing like a crazy person. And for whatever reason, he's in his underwear. <laughs> And so it doesn't matter to him because he is not there for anybody else but God. And when our hearts are like that, in anything we do, then our hearts are in the right place. So let's pray for that kind of freedom because it's so important for us to have joy and freedom that way. So Father God, I pray over my heart right now that I would have freedom like David to only consider you and what you think of me. And that I would be able to dance and to be able to do anything you ask me to do and not worry about the world's judgment of me. That I would only be thinking of your gaze on my heart. And I would follow you and I would worship you with everything in me. My whole being would praise you. I thank you, Lord God that we don't even have to worry about being humiliated in our own eyes. That that is something that doesn't matter even what we think about ourselves. It only matters what you think. So I pray that we would give you all the praise and worship that you do. We would honor you with the way we carry ourselves. And we would never dishonor you by, by paying attention to what other people think. Help us to be protected from any religious spirit that would keep us barren. Any religious spirit that would suck the life out of us or out of the world around us. Let us be full of life to overflow in every way because that's what you came for, Jesus. Let us love you in that way. In Jesus' name, amen.